So first of all, I want to thank the organizers for inviting me. It's really a great pleasure to present you data which we obtained in the last uh, more than 20 years. Some of you uh, have seen the results already on site in Vienna, or near to Vienna when you have been there eight, eight weeks ago. So I'm with the uh, University of Agriculture, or it's, it's now called University of Natural Res uh, Resources and Life Sciences, Vienna. And I'm, my background is water management. So I'm not an agronomist. I don't come from agriculture. That's why I'm not so familiar, for example, with uh, seeds. Um, but my main topic is soil conservation, soil protection. You know that soil has to fulfill different functions. Some of them, or the most important, are listed here. For you, I think the biomass production, the production function is the most important. For me, from, which come from water management, the storing function is very important. The soil can store a lot of water, a lot of uh, uh, dissolved organic material, nutrients. Then it's a habitat and gene pool, uh, all these microorganisms, microorganisms in the soil, and also the physical and cultural environment for mankind. In Austria, for example, we lose uh, 30 hectares per day of agricultural land, which is uh, approximately an average farm size in Austria. So I don't know here, but uh, this loss of ag agricultural uh, soil is a, a big problem worldwide. Um, these are the main threats. The, there was a study in the EU looking at the main threats to the soil and listed on number one is uh, soil erosion. Soil erosion by wind and water. Approximately 16% of uh, Europe's uh, land surface is uh, endangered by soil erosion. The next is the decline in organic carbon. So uh, always uh, erosion and, and uh, decline, de decrease in organic carbon is, is linked uh, uh, together. You see that 45% uh, of European soils have an organic carbon less than 2% and 13% less than 1%. And that leads, you, you need to consider their, their managements. About soil erosion, if uh, you, there's an OECD convention that if you ha have more than 2.5 tons uh, soil loss per hectare in a year, which relates only to less than 0.2 millimeter, very small, thin layer, this is not sustainable. That means you lose more soil that uh, soil is newly formed. Although I need to say that there are only a few studies about soil formation. And they are mainly done in, in cooler climates like here because in, in uh, warmer climates, you, you are not able to measure any soil formation because the, the uh, weathering is, goes so fast. And there is also, you see, uh, damage by, by the decline in organic carbon. The losses are between uh, three and six uh, billion euro, which is a, a big amount of, of money which you lose. Um, to, uh, in, uh, in 1994, um, colleague, as he was a, um, he's with the government of Lower Austria, uh, asked uh, us, he was in, interested to see the impacts of different uh, tillage practices to reduce soil erosion and nutrient losses and so on. So we started uh, at three sites, we started uh, field experiments. Uh, here is Vienna in the east of Austria, this is the main agricultural used area. Uh, about one hour drive north and west of Vienna, we installed these uh, experiments. You see these plots, they are 60 square meter large. They are bordered with metal sheets and we collect everything but which, which is uh, moving, transported off these uh, sites. We compare three different tillage practices. We have conventional tillage, you see it here with plowing. Then we have two reduced tillage practices, one with mulch seeding and cover crop uh, where you till the soil about uh, seven to 10 centimeters deep. You just disturb the soil, but you don't turn it. And then we have the no-till var variation. We have three different sites. At this site, uh, some of you have been uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, the gradient, there we have a gradient in, in rainfall, about 600 millimeter from here up to about 1,000 thousand millimeters here. Also differences in, in soil. Um, the rotation is, was mainly corn and uh, winter wheat, but we included also sugar beet and uh, sunflower in the uh, crop rotation. 
Uh, on site, we measured the runoff, uh, soil loss, the losses of uh, nutrients and pesticides from these uh, plots, and also the crop yield. Here you see the long-term uh, data, also f including uh, 2015 data. You see th three different sites. Dark blue is conventional tillage, mulch seeding, and direct seeding. What you can see that in these two sites, you see a big decrease in uh, runoff. That means more water infiltrated into the soil. You have a better, better infiltration. These are uh, data for 22 years. Pura, we have only, I have only data for six years. There, it's a very heavy soil. We have uh, more than 50% clay. We found, in the beginning, we found an increase in runoff, so a decrease, a, a slight compaction of the soil due to the reduced tillage uh, intensity and an increase in, in runoff. Uh, but for the soil loss, we see a significant reduction of soil loss at all sites although we have maybe here higher runoff, but uh, the runoff due to the uh, large amount of, of uh, plant residues on the soil surface, the flow velocity is much slower. So the water has to flow around these plant residues. <coughs> the flow velocity is lower and also the, the shear stress of the water is, is lower, therefore the erosive force. So it cannot transport so much soil with it. You see, uh, this is a very high amount. We have here uh, about 18 tons per um, soil per hectare annually. This, uh, this uh, results in uh, extreme uh, events in the first year. The first year we had three big events. One was 115 millimeter in 70 minutes. So we had extreme, we had 300 tons per hectare. <coughs> the first year I calculated this as 50 years uh, event. Now I take it as an average, therefore we have this high number. But these are average values. You see we are around nine tons per hectare and year, which is nearly uh, one millimeter per year. But you can reduce it to about three tons with mulch seeding and about one ton with uh, um, no tillage. But you have to see that this is the uh, 2.5 tons, so we are still in the range of tolerable soil loss with uh, mulch seeding. With no till, we are below this uh, soil loss. Looking at nutrients, organic carbon losses and pesticide losses, you see that you can reduce the nutrient losses of nitrogen and phosphorus. These are just the losses by overland flow and by soil loss. They are mainly uh, correlated to the soil losses. Yeah? The change in uh, the nutrient contents in runoff was, were, were not uh, significantly different. We lose about uh, 90, to, uh, 90 kilogram per hectare organic carbon with conventional tillage and only 30 and 20 with reduced tillage practices. Pesticide losses, you see here, we have about 2% two, two of the applied amount uh, is lost from organic, uh, from conventional tilled soils, whereas 1 and 0.5% from reduced tillage practices. Um, therefore, so I need to, uh, to add that uh, the losses are mainly um, uh, related when does the first erosive event after occur after application. We had one year when the erosive event occurred four days after application, then we lost nearly 30% of the of the applied amount. If you wait maybe, maybe um, four weeks, then you have no losses. So that's a, a main uh, factor for it, considering it. About uh, water losses, here this graph shows you the percentage of runoff compared to conventional tillage. It means the red line is, is 100%. That means that's the conventional runoff from conventional tillage. And this is the, from, 1994 to 2015, you see that the green and uh, black dots, this is mulch seeding and no tillage, are decreasing. We found in the first years, in the first five, six years, you don't see a big impact on the soil. So if you change to, to no tillage, you need to be patient. Soil doesn't respond very quickly. But then after several years, it depends also on the soil type, you will see that more water infiltrates into the soil and you have a better, uh, better soil water status, which is shown here. 
these are for two years the temporal distribution along a soil profile, one meter depth. This was in 2002 we had corn on the field and 2003 winter wheat. This is from beginning of uh, June until uh, end of September and this is from March to July. You see the uh, water uptake by the plant roots here for conventional tillage. Here these two show much higher soil water content. So more infiltration into the soil, you have more water in the soil and also for a longer time period. And we were able to see that also in the next year. Overall in the last years we had about 140 erosive events. What you can see here is the number of events. At all sites, nearly at all sites, we were able to reduce the number of erosive events. So for example, for conventional tillage, we had 91 erosive events, and here we had only 73. So you can reduce, you have less runoff events and also less uh, soil loss events when you have these uh, <coughs> reduced tillage practices. And these uh, reduces, red reductions are um, uh, um, significant. Also, the runoff coefficients for, we had about only 8% runoff uh, was measured for a conventional tillage, 8% of the rainfall, whereas with only 3% of the rainfall ran off for, the for direct seeding. Um, this shows a relationship between the erosivity of rainfall and the soil loss, and it's a logarithmic. If I show it in a linear graph, it doesn't look very good. Also in the logarithmic, it doesn't look so good, but it looks already better. But it shows you that the erosive force uh, of the rainfall, and this is the soil loss. If we start maybe from here or from here, from here, which means this is uh, one ton, uh, this is one ton and this is 0.1 ton. Everything below here is zero. But you see that with increasing force and the relationship between this erosivity is to erosion is better. The erosivity is a function of rainfall intensity, not the rainfall amount. The rainfall intensity is really the driving force of, of soil erosion. So you can see that the same rainfall erosivity can have a difference of one order of magnitude on erosion. So this is uh, no-till, this is co uh, conservation tillage or mulch seeding, and this is conventional tillage. So the same rainfall can have one order of magnitude difference. Although you see the range is very big, this is also when does this erosive, for, erosive event occur? How, how is the soil coverage? Is it in the beginning, in, in, Ma in May, for example, when you have no soil cover, or does the erosive event uh, occur in July when the field is totally covered. For you, what is in the interesting, the long-term crop yield, the impact on crop yields. And these are now data from of uh, 22 years of all uh, three sites. We see that at one site we have a low, de small decrease of, of crop yield. It's a crop, uh, the yield of, of the whole crop rotation. In the two other sites we have a uh, compared to conventional tillage, we have no change or slight increase in crop yield. Um, overall, if you look at the, just at the profit, what, what, uh, what's the input and what, what get you out, uh, we see that there is no significant change between no-till and uh, uh, or reduced tillage practices and conventional tillage. But some, some uh, people say that you have reductions in uh, in no, in no tillage, which can occur, but at the end, it, 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 for you, it's important what gets you back. Uh, always with the erosion, this uh, occurred this year. You have a lot of, of damage in the villages, for example. This was a few days, uh, the one day after this, this event, you see a conventional tilled soil just at the beginning of the field, at the top, where no erosion should occur, but you still had erosion. There was mulch seeding, you could see also erosion, but much less erosion. And that was done by a farmer. He, 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 he applies no-till since more than 20 years. 
his neighbor, this is the field of his neighbor, he drove with his SUV, I don't know why he drove into the field. And then suddenly you see, he didn't stop here, he drove over it, you know, but you, you don't see the, the tracks, of the wheel tracks. So you see that the, the soil is much more stable against this impact of energy. So that's also very important. Next thing, we, some people talked about already about the carbon, carbon dioxide, organic carbon in the soil. So we had a, a project measuring on, on soil respiration or carbon dioxide emissions from soil. Uh, we did it at two sites. We used uh, this so-called closed chamber where you put this, this chamber on the soil and then you, you measure the uh, concentration of uh, CO2 leaving the soil. CO2 is produced by the microorganisms. They decompose the organic carbon and together with the oxygen they use, they produce the CO2. At the same time, organic carbon is, is uh, decreased. So these are the data. These are the carbon dioxide emissions. You see we have two sites, one sandy soil and one clay soil. Here we have 60% clay. Here we have about 60% silt. Uh, you see differences in the years, yeah? Differences in the years between corn, for example, and winter wheat, we saw always that uh, small <coughs> grains had higher emissions. I think that's also because of you have a more porous soil, whereas for corn, in, the, in between the rows, the soil is se sealed during the summer, most of it. And you see also differences between the soils, much lower here, lower porosity for clay soil than for sandy soil. Overall, the losses, you see here, the organic carbon losses, because if you, you have to divide this by 3.67, then you can get from CO2 to uh, carbon. You see between nine tons per hectare and year to seven tons per hectare and year between conventional and no-till. Uh, there is a difference in the clay, uh, lo uh, loamy clay. There was no, we didn't measure any difference between the uh, treatments. There is also no difference between conventional tillage and, and mulch seeding. Yeah? If I calculate just the, the change of organic ca uh, carbon versus conventional tillage per year, then we see that uh, for this soil we have a slight increase in organic carbon, mm -hmm. and for the other one we have no change or maybe also a slight decrease of organic carbon in the soil. What's very important was also mentioned already, the diesel consumption, just to to uh, the diesel consumption to seed winter wheat for, again, two soils, very uh, silt loam and uh, loamy clay, you see differences by 50% and 80%. Yeah? Reduction from 80, to 80 liters per hectare just for planting to 30 and, and 6 liters. Multiplied uh, 80 liters uh, or 70 liters multiplied by 1 euro, I don't know, 1 euro or 5, it's in Austria. So it's uh, already maybe more than one ton. Uh, you can produce one ton less and have the same, same income, which is very important. Still, talking about the organic carbon, we found an increase, but we looked also, and uh, didn't show the data, we looked also at the organic carbon down to one meter. You see an increase in the first 30 centimeters, but if you look at the deeper layers, overall, you see no significant change. You see no significant increase in organic carbon. You see just the redistribution. You see more organic carbon in the top soil, top 10, 20 centimeters, which is tilt. But you see a decrease of organic carbon in reduced tillage practices compared to conventional tillage. So um, maybe there is just a redistribution over the rooting depth and not really an, an increase of organic carbon. To summarize, uh, soil is our main resource, um, the extent is under threat, it's increasing or decreasing, we have uh, urban use, we have construction of, of infrastructure and so on. So we need to, to take care of the soil health or maybe also improve it. Soil erosion depends on erosivity but also on the time when the rainfall occurs, so the soil condition, the coverage of the soil, etc. Conservation tillage has positive impacts on the infiltration, so it increases infiltration, it reduces the runoff, but you need to be patient. You see the, the effects only several years after you change the different uh, uh, tillage practices. 
we didn't observe significant changes in uh, crop yield. Only sugar beet, you meet, sugar beet <coughs> is sensitive to, to uh, direct seeding. We were able to increase the organic carbon contents in the topsoil and therefore also increase the aggregate stability, which means the soil is then more stable against the erosive force of water and wind. Uh, we have also le less uh, surface sealing of the so uh, soil. We promote this evergreen field. That the field should be covered the whole, throughout the whole year with cover crops. It improves overall soil quality <coughs> and also not only the crop uh, productivity function but also the filtering function. Uh, organic carbon has a lot of, of bonding uh, uh, possibilities. We have already a lot of efficient soil conservation practices we just need to apply them, you know? And also, when you apply them, it's very important to think about economy. Uh, farmers are businessmen. <coughs> you know, you should think about, not only about uh, crop yields, but at the, you should think about what's at the end of the year, how much money do I earn, you know? And uh, I asked for this knife in the morning, the, my colleagues were laughing. If you think this is the world, the apple, yeah? And then I cut out just five or six percent. Six percent is a very small part of the whole world. This is the part which we um, use for agriculture. You know, and then you put away the skin, which is even much smaller. So small that I can't hold it. So this is the, the part of the soil which, from which we live, you know? So we need to take care of this very th thin layer that we don't lose it for us. Thank you very much. <laughs>